So let's understand the history of Git. Now it is interesting, that's why we have this special video for it. The thing is, if we talk about any open source project, so what happens in open source project is, we have multiple people working on the same project, but you will say, hey, that also happens with the normal projects, right? The thing is, in normal projects, we have limited set of people. Let's say if you are working for a company and you are building a project, you have, let's say, a set of people in a team, they will be working on it. And then you trust everyone because they are a part of a project. In the open source project, anyone can contribute. Let's say one day I decided to be a part of one open source project. Of course, it will take some time for me to understand the project. And then if I feel, hey, you know, everything is good in this particular project. So let's say it's any OS. Let's say we have this own Telesco OS. And then one day I want to contribute to that particular OS. I want to add a new feature of, let's say, a Bluetooth connectivity, just for an example. I can write my own module and add that in the OS in my machine. But if I want the entire world to use it, I have to send them the new code, right? But then how this thing will work, how multiple people in the world can contribute to one project. In the earlier days, we used to do something called archive files or sending the batches, right? Now, this is the same thing happened with Linux as well. Now, if you know Linux kernel, very famous one, the founder is Linus Torvald, and he is very particular about how Linux should work, what are the features we should have. Now, initial days when 1991 to 2002, it was more about uh, if you want to provide the features, you can send patches or you can use archive files. But then in 2002, they started using some, some proprietary tool called BitKeeper. Now, BitKeeper, I think, was free at that point. And then they started using BitKeeper so that they can get the contribution from the world easily now. They don't, they don't have to go through a manual process of doing that. So they can simply use BitKeeper and they can send their code and then they can do the merging as well. Now the problem is at one point the policy of BitKeeper changed and they started charging. Now the Linux community was doing it for free and then the entire world was using Linux for free. So they thought it's a good time now to move away from BitKeeper and that's where Git was formed. Of course they tried to make it very different from BitKeeper. So BitKeeper was working in a different way and Git worked in a different way. Again, what is that different way that we'll understand once we start the actual implementation. But that's how in 2005 Git started. It's not like someone thought, hey, let's do this version control system. No, they were using something else. It's just that because of some issue between the BitKeeper and the community, they moved away from it and they started using Git. As I mentioned before, Git is different from all different version control systems, right? Even different from BitKeeper. And since it is different, it has given some amazing features. It is very simple to use. It is fast. Uh, it also allows you something called branching. Again, once we move towards uh, the advanced part of Git, we'll understand what branching means. And it's a fun concept to learn and also to implement. And it is fully distributed, which makes Git very famous. And I know we have done enough build up. And the question is, how do we use Git? We want to collaborate and we want to work with Git so that we can collaborate with different people and we can build a project. It doesn't matter is it a proprietary project you're working in a company or open source. How do we use it? And that we'll understand in the upcoming videos.